Hello guys, I'm Keltius. Welcome to another Mock Talk video. This time I'll be talking about my Blacktron Scout Tracks. I think the most interesting thing about this mock is its unique steering mechanism, but it also is pretty fast and has an uh, interesting propulsion mechanism. And um, I would also like to talk a little bit about uh, why I chose Blacktron as a theme for this mock. If you're only interested in one of these topics, please check the description for the link to the topic of your preference. So, as, as some of you may know, uh, Blacktron was the first of two sub-themes of the LEGO Space Line. The other one is Futuron, and they were introduced by LEGO in the late 1980s. So that's a pretty long time ago. And everything before these two sub-themes is uh, called Classic Space, which is also, well, which is what I actually grew up with, and uh, which is what I have a lot of uh, love for. Here you can see a catalogue of that era. I uh, used to love looking at these catalogues, imagining that I had all these lovely uh, Lego sets. Of course I didn't, but still I loved looking at them. And Blackstrom was unique for me because uh, of unique uh, characteristics of this sub-theme. It was the first time we got uh, bad guys in space, which is of course very cool. And uh, but, but not only that, uh, it was also the design of this uh, sub-theme. For instance, the unique color scheme the original Black Throne can easily be identified by its black and yellow color scheme, which I think is a very cool color combination. Not only the color combination is very cool, also the vehicles themselves. Uh, for some reason, they look very uh, dark, dangerous, uh, fast, and, well, just a little bit badass, uh, I would say. You can also link it back to the 80s themselves. Uh, a lot of the things that were cool in the 80s were black. Some of you may know a series like Airwolf and Knight Rider. Black was really the cool color back in those days. And then finally, of course, uh, we have to talk a little bit about the minifigures, uh, which you can see here. Um, the minifigs that I show here are a little bit modified. The original minifigs just looked very cool with their black spacesuits and their black visors. Uh, the first time we got those uh, new uh, shaped visors back then. Of course, I uh, did change the, the appearance of this, these minifigures because I think that uh, LEGO has evolved a little bit and um, the new uh, faces uh, and hairstyles are uh, very cool uh, and they give the minifigures a little bit more character, which I like a lot. So I've included those. Finally, uh, what I would like to say about Blacktron as a whole uh, is that I would really like to see uh, it return to a LEGO sometime. At the end of the, this video I will talk a little bit more about that because I have this mock also up on LEGO Ideas if you're interested in that. Finally I would like to talk a little bit about how I got introduced to Blacktron and that was uh, for me a unique experience, maybe not very interesting for you. Uh, so well, I will keep it short. I got this set, uh, set 6941 for Sinterklaas Avond, which is a Dutch family tradition and I was over the moon. Uh, I must have been a very good boy uh, that year. It was just uh, it was just really the best set I could have gotten. I really loved how it looked, the transformation feature, how, how sleek it was, uh, also the size of it. It was very big, or at least for a Lego set in uh, in that time, it was very big. So that's how my love for Blacktron started, and also what made me want to build uh, a mock in a Blacktron style. So that's what I would like to say about the Blackton sub theme. And now I would like to talk a little bit more about the technical aspects of this mock. Starting with the steering mechanism. The inspiration for that came from watching a documentary about a new type of car. The car in that documentary steered in a very awkward way or a very interesting way because its main body would lean into a corner a bit like a motorcycle which I thought was very interesting and when I started to think about that I figured it would be a practical way to steer in a lot of ways. A little bit later I also started to build uh, with LEGO again and then uh, I figured it might be an interesting uh, topic for my first wheeled mock to implement such a steering mechanism. Unfortunately my first attempts were not very successful. For some reason or another I couldn't find a simple implementation of the steering mechanism. I kept over engineering it, making it more complex and cumbersome than it should have been. So after a while I uh, decided to leave it alone for a bit and put it in my box of unfinished uh, LEGO mocks. And then at a certain point I had to think about how a skateboard steering mechanism works. And then I figured, well actually that's what I need for my LEGO mock. 
And some of you may have already noticed the similarity between the skateboard and the steering mechanism in my mock. Basically it's the same thing. So what's crucial here is that the front and rear axles are suspended at an angle of 45 degrees. So when I use a linear actuator to lean the cabin to one side, then the wheels on uh, the front and rear axle on that side will move towards the center. And the wheels on the other side will move away from the center wheel. So this results in two things. First of all, a steering mechanism. The vehicle will try to steer uh, when it's positioned like that. But also it changes the center of gravity to the inside of the corner, which means it can use its mass to create additional downforce. And the additional downforce makes it much easier to overcome the inertia. And also because the center of gravity is on the inside of the corner, and you need a lot less energy to overcome the inertia because you more or less drive around the center of gravity. And finally, the occupants of a vehicle like this will have a more comfortable ride because when you have uh, the inertia in a corner, people uh, in a normal car would tend to be pushed to the side of the vehicle. But in this vehicle, they would just be pushed into their seats, more or less. So it's not only easier for uh, the vehicle to make a corner, but also easier for the occupants to take a corner, uh, which makes it possible to take corners at much higher speeds than an ordinary vehicle could. Personally, I think it would be very interesting to drive a vehicle like this in real life. Of course, a vehicle like this is not really suited for an urban environment. This vehicle was designed as a science fiction vehicle, and it's, it's, it's meant to roam on, on barren planets, on vast barren planets, at high speed. The current uh, implementation of the steering mechanism still has a few problems. And uh, the main one is that it's very difficult to judge the angle of the cabin, and so the angle that the vehicle is making, um, or the, the degree to which the vehicle is taking a corner. Also, it's very difficult to judge the exact moment when to release uh, the control mechanism to have the vehicle completely upright and steering straight forward. The other problem with the steering mechanism at the moment is that the, it takes quite a long time for the, the linear actuator to fully uh, extend and retract. So taking a corner or taking a sharp corner just takes a couple of seconds and uh, I consider in a, in, a, in a fully developed vehicle, uh, a couple of seconds too long a time to take a corner. So at the moment I'm still toying around with uh, this steering mechanism a little bit. And because of that, I've made a second version of this vehicle with two different implementations of this steering mechanism. Uh, the first one, which is in this vehicle, is a return to center steering mechanism, which is controlled by a normal uh, motor. This implementation should do two things. Uh, first of all, it should make it much easier to drive straight forward because uh, the vehicle will automatically return to its center position. Uh, so whenever the motor is not powered, the vehicle should return to, to an upright position and uh, drive straight forward. Also, the speed at which you can change direction should improve a lot. And finally, the return to center mechanism should function as a sort of suspension system as well because there is some elicity in the center axle. The second implementation of this steering mechanism is just by using the power function servo motor, which should give a lot of additional control over the steering of this vehicle, and also should improve the speed at which you can change directions a lot. Unfortunately, the servo motor is now being used in another mock of mine, so I have to wait a little while before I can test this mock using that setup. Now, I would also like to talk about the propulsion of this mock. Personally, I always like to experiment with the electronics to get the most performance out of my mocks. This time, I tried a new setup. A couple of months ago, I watched a video by Attica. You can find a link to it in the description, which is basically a how-to video about how to use third-party LiPo cells with the power functions system. He also included some documents on what parts you can get. Based on this information, I bought my own set of LiPo cells which are a lot less expensive than I had feared. The main advantage of a LiPo setup like this is its awesome power to weight and size ratio. To show you what I mean, I will compare the Power Functions battery pack to the LiPos I use. A standard unmodified 
power function's battery pack is able to deliver 9 volts at about 1 amp and such a battery pack weighs about 115 grams fully loaded and measures 177 cubic centimeters. The two LiPo cells shown here provide 8.4 volts, are able to deliver an impressive 21 amps and weigh a mere 70 grams while measuring only 16 cubic centimeters. Basically, these LiPo cells provide you with more current than you are realistically going to need, at a fraction of the weight and volume, which will improve the performance of your mocks immensely. If we for instance apply this to my Scoutrax model, that in order to power all the motors and lights, I would probably need three battery boxes, which would weigh 345 grams, while I'm actually only using two sets of two LiPo cells, which only weigh 34 grams. So in this case the LiPo solution weighs only 10% of what the standard power functions battery packs would have weighed. Given that weight is a very important factor in performance, it is obvious that I would not have been able to build a similar model with anywhere near similar performance while using the standard PF battery box, if I would have been able to fit them in the first place, which I highly doubt. Making such a setup as I described here is not particularly difficult, however if you intend to experiment with LiPo cells, I should caution you. The lack of power functions battery box is a foolproof device, meaning that it's very difficult to damage it through normal use. LiPos are another matter entirely. In the setup I used, there are practically no fail-safes, so if I would use them improperly, which is quite easy to do, there is a high chance that I would damage something. This hasn't happened to me so far, but that's probably partially due to my background in electrical engineering. If you don't have this background knowledge, I would advise you to educate yourself a bit about LiPos before you start to experiment. P.S. The documents Attica provided should do the job. Finally, if you like this mock, I would encourage you to see my little story video of it, where you can see it in action in all its glory. I've also uploaded it to LEGO Ideas, and I need several more votes to reach 100, after which I will have an entire year to progress further, but I only have a couple of days left to do so. So any support you may want to give, whether it is by liking, sharing or supporting it on LEGO Ideas, is greatly appreciated. And finally, I would like to thank you for watching.